Hey, this is Elliot, back again with Big Billy for episode three of I Am Music. Billy, introduce who we have with us today. What's up, guys? Uh, so if you guys have been tuning in, we've been doing these podcasts, uh, and they've been really fun. Today we have two legends, um, Mishka and Ron Feimster, nephew. Um, I love you guys, and I'm so glad that you guys... Like, yeah, it's, you, it's, it's, it's awesome because you guys have... Um, been able to be a part of Vocalize You, both of you guys have come to camp and like been able to mentor kids. Um, and so thank you guys for that. So this is kind of an extension of that, this podcast, and um, it's awesome to have you guys here. Yeah, thank you for yeah. taking the I time. I mean, a lot of the kids that come to camp, you know, email me and Elliot all the time and just say, yo, like, nephew and Mishka are amazing. Like, how, you know, so the, a lot of them have been uh, affected by mm. all of your stories and your words of wisdom. So um, thank you guys for doing this. Of course. Pleasure. How you guys been? Been good. Been really, really good. How's that? Uh, I just talked to this man yesterday. Did you? That's right. Yeah, crazy. We, we were supposed to have a session today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we benefit from the, yeah. uh, the lack of session. Like, worked out. Out. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. I love that. Well, because I, I mean, I, I think last, we all hung out a long time ago, the three of us, and I remember like I have a picture of all of us, but um, we, us three have been knuckleheads together. Like, good times. Yeah. A lot of years of, uh, of, uh, Friendship and knuckleheadness. Yes. I've uh, known you since Def Jam. Oh my God. When I was big, when I was literally big Billy Clark. You were big Billy <laughs> Clark. Now, but you were, you were kind of little big Billy now, Clark. Now, now I'm meeting him. I was literally, yeah, I was yeah, little he big. Was, little big Billy he was, Clark. You were little. <laughs> <laughs> How's this pandemic been for you guys? Um, it's It was a challenge in the beginning, but it became, you, once I figured it out, it all yeah. kind of came together. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, I got to work with this man a lot. We never saw each other during the process, but <laughs> it was all, you know, it was yeah. all virtual, but uh, it worked out. Yeah. I mean, we had a, we had a really successful Pretty year. Successful, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Love to hear that. Do you do a lot of the, a lot of Zoom, ses- like Zoom sessions? Yeah. A lot of Zoom sessions uh, is, I say, you know, I, I say this with tender care. Uh, <laughs> uh, I got to, like, the pandemic, you know, my heart goes out to a lot of the families of and people that were affected. But I think there are so many, like, also great things. Thinking besides having a baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I think it, it was a nice time to actually take a break. You know, the whole world, like, self-reflect, refresh. Yeah. Reset. Yeah, like, to get on the freeway in L.A. and nobody. nobody. Yeah, like, that was nice for a minute. Yeah. You know, the giraffes start taking over the freeway. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. It was just yeah. nice to see, you know, so. Yeah, it's it's great. I, I um, was at an event the other day, and I was talking to this guy who was a producer, and he was like, yeah, man, you know, um, this pandemic's been great for me because I have so many of my friends that are, like, bitching about, oh, you know, the pandemic and I can't do nothing and nothing's open and I'm just going to stay home and just, you know, do nothing until everything opens back up. And he's like, he explaining to them like, yo, this is this is the perfect opportunity for you to do the fuck you want to do. All the crazy mm. ideas you have, like every, while everyone's asleep, you attack. Mm. And, and for me, I noticed that it was like a great time for me to kind of, like you said, re- reflect and kind of reset. Yeah. But I like also kind of see what's going on around me, Who who's going on around me, what everyone's doing and what everyone's not doing. Mm. And it's just all this stuff opened up, yeah. you know? And and it allowed, um, I mean, Elliot talked about it all the time, but it allowed us to really kind of focus on the things we want to attack and creating that, that plan and just kind of going after it, you know? Well, because I think when it happens and you're so busy, you may be working on things that you truly don't want to be working on. So this was that pause, but mm. also to, to throw a pause when it's indefinite. We don't know when it was going to be up or whatever. You're just going to sit and throw your hands up. Yeah. I feel like that's such a, a shit way of looking at that. And for me, yeah, it's hard to say sometimes. I feel like to say, be like, this was an amazing, you know, kind of moment to be able to sit and refocus. But this is the first time in seven years, like I haven't had to go out on tour and stuff like that. So I was thankful to be at home with my kids mm-hmm. and still be able to create with the people that yeah. I work with. Like what a privilege. Other than touring, and obviously we're in a different position, like we said, but it was, it was I feel like I gained a whole lot from it and I could put my hat on it from looking back and be like, I did accomplish a lot that I wanted to and I didn't just sort of go, well, a year of my life. Mm. Yeah. I've never been a person who would look at it, something like that as poor me. Yes. You know, like I'm stuck. 
to me, I usually look at things like that as opportunities. Totally. It's it's awful that yes. so many so many of my people had to pass away through this through this yeah. pandemic and through this insanity. But you still have to look at if, if the minute I was locked when the lockdown first happened, I thought, okay, I'm going to take the next month. Yeah, there were yeah, no cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. I ride my bike. Yeah. I'm going to ride every single day, and I'm going to ride as far as I want to. Yeah. And I never ever saw a car. After that first month was over, I'm like, okay, now what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. I have to do, I have to do other things. Like there have to be other things that that I can improve on in myself. Yeah. There have to be like, you know, when I f- this is this is one thing. When I first started with Rodney Jurgens, Rodney didn't know it, but I'd written up until that point six songs lyrically. Everything I did before that was track. Right. And I would get other people to write lyrics to my stuff and then right. I would sing it. Right. So I, I took the first, after that, I took that first couple of months of just like, I'm going to sit at this piano and play this piano. Yeah. That's like, I mean. that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here and play. I'm going to gain some other superpowers. Because, you know, like, I know, what, well, I know what I'm doing when I walk in the studio on vocals. Right. I know that. But to me, if you can broaden what you, if you can learn something every single day mm-hmm. to bring into your tool belt, mm-hmm. that's like, that's yeah. heaven. And, yes. and God forced us to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. right. And that's you know? exactly what happened. God forced us to. Yeah. But you have two ways to look at that. So you chose to look at it that way. Mm-hmm. And you're the better for it because you're more equipped now. You have more tools in your belt. I have belt, more like tools. I mean, and, and you know, I hate this, you know, the whole closing down. I don't like, personally, I don't like doing zoom recording sessions mm-hmm. i would if i was to choose which course, one i would want yeah, to do right. yeah. would i want to be in the studio i want to be in the studio right? yeah of course but if i if if i look at what happened during that period mm-hmm. um we did leslie together basically a, did a whole all Chris, christmas record all, all, record. all, all virtual number one record um wow. uh, Congrats. Yeah. uh his academy award uh, nominated uh, song virtually you know what I mean? So yeah. all this, all this stuff. These are things that now. Yeah. One night, in Miami. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So yeah. now there are things in my in my brain. The one thing I know for sure, I already used to travel to China to record Chinese artists. But the idea of me having to get on a plane to record somebody in Italy, that's that's not even necessary anymore. Right. Yeah. I've figured out how to do it virtually. Right. You know. And we were talking about this a little bit before, but I just want to see from you guys like. Working with somebody for the first time, not a, not artist you're familiar with, was that awkward virtually? Because you're not able to have that energy. Um, uh, before I jump there, I just, I kind of love. Oh, yeah. I, I want to. I love that. I am music. I think. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's fire. I think <laughs> there's there's so much to unpack. Yeah. You know, with that statement. But that's and that's why I think when we started this, it was like. You know, uh, we all know so many people, yeah. but you know, and this business is all relationships. But you know, producers, songwriters, managers, A and R's, you know, all these different people that are that they are music. But before you know, it, they're all involved in the music industry, so they are music. Mm-hmm. And I want to bring everybody in to tell their story and, and have their perspective, so that people can see, you know, because I mean, I, I remember for me. Um, you know, in the beginning when I started interning at Def Jam, I was like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I it was interning and I was doing video promotions and I was doing a street team and I was, I was helping everybody in the office out, mm-hmm. trying to figure out what I felt like, you know, and obviously I gravitated to A&R, but, you know, I, I fucking know, you know, but like there's, there's so many doors that opened up that I didn't take that I could have taken. I could have been a promotions guy. I could have been, you know, so but everybody has to figure out what, what their thing is. And I think that like, you know, everybody has something to offer. And, and, and when you figure it out, it's like, yeah, you're, you're in this business. I, I wouldn't know what I would be doing if I wasn't doing, you know, I'd be doing something in music. I'd still be, I'd, I'd still be I music, but it'd be something else, you right. know? But. Can we be nerds? I want to be a little nerdy. Uh, I, I love it. Because when I say I am music is so much, and we all can talk like this, right? Yeah. When I say there's so much to unpack, when I think about that, when we think about music, music is is a sound. Yeah. Right? And sound is like the closest thing to God energy. You know, once it's out there, it never dies. It's like, I think everything that makes up what a human is, you know, our soul, our mind, our earth suit is what I call it, right? Mm-hmm. Is, is sound. Is 
something that was developed over time because of either words that were spoken into our lives, mm -hmm. you know, what energy is, it's a sound, you know? When I think of I Am Music throughout the pandemic, my opinion, I think when you say that, music is just a reflection of your life. It's like what makes up your identity as a human, you know? Um, because when we normally, when we think about music, we think about the songwriting aspect. We think about the producing side of things, but it's like music is just a reflection for me of me being a husband or a dad or, you know, now I've realized throughout the pandemic, I like gardening. <laughs> you know, I, I like, you know, I got two new puppies. It's like, you know, making decisions, <laughs> you know, going to the cooking more now, yeah. you know, it's like, and so when I think about music, when I go into the studio, I have my life to fuel what I am, right. you know? Right. And so it was like the pandemic gave me new layers of life yep. to be inspired from. You know, music is, I think music is, as another layer to our dimension. We have our mind, mm. we have, which is our soul, we have our spirit, which for me is like the real us. And then we have these earth suits that keeps us leveled on this planet, right? right. And I think music is that fourth dimension, you know? Uh, so when I, when I look at that, that hits me a certain kind of way. And uh, it's dope to hear it. I love that. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> and that's, I think, and you know, Big Billy, you know, Billy, I think for me, the music that you are is like, you've always been joy. You know, every time I, like, I see you, it's like, you want to be creative around yeah. Billy because of the energy that you exude. Yes. I appreciate and, that. Uh, yeah. I appreciate you that. You know, when people look for inspiration, I'm like, call Billy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just talk to him for like, yeah. uh, like a minute, a minute, 30 seconds, <laughs> just talk, you know? But I think that's your music, you know, your yeah. life to me, yeah. you know? I, I appreciate that. It means a lot. Yeah. Coming from especially coming from you guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, that means a lot. Thank you. And it's always been that way. That's the funny yes. thing. Literally, when he was a, when he was an intern, that was that was the thing I remember about walking into that office, is everybody was happier if he was there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just... It's funny. I, I, I think I told the story last time, but um, when, I'm, when I was at Def Jam, my last year at Def Jam, they moved me to New York, and I was in New York. And I remember my first day in the office in New York, I'm um, kind of walking through the halls, and everybody was like, we're so happy you're here. We love your energy. You're like, you're like a ray of sunshine. Yeah, and, and I felt so good. I was like, this is great. And I, it was like, you're always smiling. And it, it, like, we loved having your energy here in the New York office. And I was like, oh, this is great, you know? And like after like six months, everyone was like, are you okay? <laughs> Everyone's fine. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone was like, are you, you're not the same really you were six months ago. And I was like, yes, I am. But I was so stressed out. And, and I didn't even realize how stressed out I was. I was walking around like, probably like, <laughs> you know, like, and they were just like, yeah. Like, but after I heard that like seven or eight times, I was like, no, everything's fine. And I was like, maybe, maybe I so, do need maybe, to check. Maybe yeah, I do yeah, need yeah. to do something because I'm like, everybody, everybody was like, are you, are you okay? Everything. I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm great. I'm happy. I feel like I was stressed. That is the one drawback to you. You're always, like I said, yeah. and I've told you that so many times, yeah. you're always in this great mood and you're always a smile and to mm. everyone. And then the moment that if for some reason I feel like I don't see that, even when I walked in, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, what's up? We, I hugged him and then I was like, why do you seem somber right yeah, now? Like, what's going on? Like, I want to know really quickly if something's, I know. something's my, up. I wear my emotions on my sleeve all the time. So it's like, if I'm, I'm usually happy, but there's times I'm like, maybe not as happy. So it definitely shows. Well, no, no, just even like, normal. Yeah, I feel like you, you <laughs> ask like, if everything's okay. Yeah. For you. I feel like, is it ever really taxing when you talk? Because no. Um, when you, do you feel like no, and like, someone and someone brought that up to me the other day. They're like, "It must be hard. It must be draining for you to always exude so much of love." And I was like, "No, because this is how this is how I am. Mm. Like, this is this is me all the time. Like, you mm. know, I'm not trying to put on a front. I'm not yeah. trying to. I'm not trying to like, okay, be be loving today. Be you know, be extra. Yeah. I'm mm. like, this is just how I am. Yeah. So, it, I don't know the different. You know, there's. It's not draining for me at all." This is just how I, think, I always am. I think body expression sometimes 
for me, just being transparent. Yeah. I think can be a little draining. Yeah. You know, because uh, we're all can we're all just happy people. Mm. But there's those moments to where I just Oh yeah. I just yeah, want yeah. to just yeah, and then some people think you're not happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's those moments to where you just want to power down. Yeah, and yeah. Just, yeah. It's like we're moments, not, moments where you have to. Yeah, we're not always on ten, and I think that people expect that when they when you're used to that, they expect that all the time. When you're when you're not, they're like, "What's wrong with you?" I'm like, I'm on seven. I'm not fine. I'm great. I'm mm-hmm. on ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seven's okay. Yeah, seven's good. Seven's good. You know. Well, you can't live on a ten either. No. Uh, all the no, time? No, 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 There's no, 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 as happy or bubbly as I usually am, but it's not like we're not going to get. The, I'm still going to work and get the job. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, everybody has things that go, of course, go on of course, in their lives, and you know, you know, on those days. But you still have to work. Of course, yeah, you know. Of course. So, I mean, free, free Britney. But oh, wow. <laughs> but it's something like you and y'all kind of touched on earlier is that power of choice, right? Mm. There's those days where being, you know, a producer, a songwriter. Or, to where you have to be selfless are to where there's those days you do not feel mm. like but you see like the song is always bigger than my feelings so when you with the artist and you know I have to kind of just choose to be happy today of like I have to to get the best out of that artist yeah, or of course when you in the room you have to you know pull it from somewhere. Did that take a long time to get to that place? It's a choice. And I think time and discipline teaches you how to get to that place like that. What I'm saying, if at the beginning of the journey, was it harder to, for the choice to kind of feel like that? Oh, it's not a choice. I'm just in this space today. And this is I I wasn't, I wasn't even aware. Yeah. That it's like, I wasn't even aware of those choices or mm-hmm. opportunities. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, the more you do this, I think the wiser you get yeah. and the more understanding you have. Yeah. Yeah. And you realize you was chosen. For me, I think being a producer or a songwriter, we're like the biggest servants. They look at us like as leaders, which, but I think the truth, any good leader is also the best servant. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. it's. Of course. I showed up to serve is like, yeah. how do I get the best song yeah. possible? Yeah. And these people come in here with their life mm-hmm. yeah. and yeah. they spill their guts to oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in the moments they don't really, there's no judgment, there's yeah. no formed opinion. Yeah. They just want you to here yeah. and you know they give you permission to go into the universes and yeah how was it working with michael i know both of you guys did <laughs> um for me i would say the the happiest thing i've ever done in my life really yeah what the just the happiest thing that i've ever done in my life the most joyful thing that i've ever done in my life was have have an opportunity to be on something that 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 yeah. man who I adored as course, a child. Of course, yeah. Um, that was to me the. I, mean, I remember being in New York with, and it was it was actually the day that he'd left. I got there and Harvey uh, Harvey Mason Jr. Yeah. who was at that time, I'm um, still part of Rodney's camp. Yeah. Um, they were tearing down the room and it was Studio A at Sony in New York. Yeah, yeah. And it's like they had these huge baffles in the back of the room, huge, right, and. The way that you would know he he had been there was in those baffles. Every single one of those baffles was instead of doing their job as to <laughs> you know as a bass trap, right. they, they were all filled with like tons of like Disney toys straight to the ceiling. <laughs> it was a huge ceiling. Wow! So it was like, but you just it's almost like it puts you in a in a certain space yeah. just feeling that energy yeah. anyway. So you know. I don't know. Go ahead. No, I mean, 
I'm just curious. I'm just curious. There's so know. many feelings, you know. I guess the I guess I think the word for me today is unpacking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These thoughts with the little time we have. Um, from me working with Michael was like going into a black hole. Mm. You know, it's yeah. like you're both putting on an astronaut outfit, <laughs> putting on a helmet, yeah. and you're literally going to a place even he's never been. He yeah. was like, let's just travel the universe, searching for sounds and melodies yeah. and yeah. rhythms the world has never heard before. Because when you a man like him and you touch the world, yeah, you know, like everybody pretty much almost on, almost on the whole planet knows yeah. your music. Yeah, of course. When you can, when you have, and then you say, okay, I did that. Yeah. What's next? So with him, it was always, all right, I mean, let's, let's go. So it yeah. was, a lot of the times there was, uh, creativity had no destination. Yeah. It was just pure discovery. And yeah. <laughs> even though we found so many alien rocks and <laughs> melodies and rhythms, yeah, and we were like maybe in 3022, Mm. You know, and then sometimes we were in, you know, eighteen twelve, trying to figure out how to make eighteen twelve relevant to the time he was living. Right. We were in a position to where we found alien rocks, but for the time period that we're in, how can we be close enough to the curve? Yeah. Where people can relate to us. Right. And right. still right. be far on far away enough where it's to where we're still fresh uh -huh. and innovative. Uh -huh. So for us, we creative wise, we were in a position of what do we want to show the world yeah. today? Because we went to Mars and and so yeah, yeah, like it That's was a real thing. yeah, that was no, a, it was a little, a little bit, different. Yeah. He was um, I didn't grow up listening to Michael like that, so oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, for Church me, boy. for me, the world saw him as massive. Yeah. For me, he was just uh, a really good friend, yeah. you know. Uh, I'm careful when I say this. It's yeah. not I wasn't, I wasn't a fan. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because what people call singers, I compare that to church singers. Gotcha, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Of course. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Of course. But I understood later what made him. Yeah. Him. Mega star. Yeah. Yeah. It's so what he said about galaxies. It's like, that's really interesting. So there's there's a very famous producer, I can't tell you who the producer was, but he told me this. And he said that many times he had called, Michael had called him to work with him. And his feeling of why he knew he couldn't work with him on that level of like an everyday thing was because he knew in his mind that he was going to take him somewhere else and he was scared he would never be able to get back Come to back. where he was. Wow. Yeah. This, and this is an extremely successful, <laughs> right. yeah, many, yeah, many, yeah. Num more number ones than, you know, most people you ever meet in your life. And he, this is what he said to me. It's like, he said, I can, I could do a song, but I can't go into the- I had to make the choice. Of I couldn't go into it because yeah. I knew I, I felt like my personality, I may not ever get back. Wow. And you go, like when you go- Yeah. Because when I came back to work with just, you know, new artists. Yeah, <laughs> right. Bro, after you, it's like if you lived in America your whole life. Yeah. Or you just one state. Yeah. But you've never been to China or to Israel or you never been to Asia. Like, <laughs> you know, and yeah. you try to explain that to someone. Yeah. But. So are you, given both you guys, you grew up just thinking it was this. You, like you said, you put it, not a massive fan, but you understood. Are you able to go into a project or a session like that and still try to look at it as just another session, just another project? Or is it tough to not overthink going into You mean this? other sessions? No, no, no. Like, like going into a session with Michael and not going, oh shit. All right. Like, well, I'll tell you one thing. So the, there's a song, that, there's a song that I wrote with Rodney in the camp called Heartbreaker. Mm -hmm. The day we day we wrote that song, Michael was supposed to come back to the studio. He had gone to Africa, but he called us. He called us and he, he um, Rodney played him a record. I can't remember which one it was. Mm -hmm. Played him another record. And 
Michael over the phone. This is like, I'll never forget this. Over the phone, he's like on speaker. He's like, Roddy, is that a, is that a Triton? Is that keyboard a Triton? And, you know, like Rodney's kind of looking around the room like, how does he know that? <laughs> he's like, uh, yeah, that's, that's Triton. He's like, and, the, and that keyboard, that other keyboard sound, is, is, that, is that from like, uh, like a Roland 1080? <laughs> right? And he said, yes. And Michael told him, he said, here's what I need. I need every sound to be sounds that have been crafted in a way that they've never been heard before. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So he said, it doesn't matter if you start with, that's the, if that's yeah, where yeah, we yeah. start. Yeah. He said, but I want you to bring somebody in to sound design those into something that mm -hmm. isn't that. So that, you know, like it's a, it's yeah. a totally different, totally different world. Yeah. And that was, that was the day that Rodney did the track for Heartbreaker. And I knew when I heard the track, I knew that was, I literally knew it was from Michael because it was like nothing we'd <laughs> yeah, done for right. like, we, we worked every single day right. for months and months and months on every other project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one was just out of this world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Aliens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I knew, I knew, I knew instinctively as soon as I heard that track. And I, that's why I, I was like, I started singing on this thing in two seconds. Yeah. I, Cause I knew. Yeah. It's crazy to hear that stuff, that stories like that because it's like it's so interesting as far as like artists go now. It's like even seeing T Pain go on that rant about like, Are you, like I want to hear some different shit. I want to you know like everything sounds the same. We already have a little bit. We already you know I'm like that's I get it because everything sounds the same. But like you hear something like how Michael's processes and it's like you you understand his mind is somewhere else and it's like it's so interesting when there's artists that that think outside the box in that in that sense. You know? But I think they're still here. They're just not, they're not to the extent of Michael. Of course, yeah, of course. You know course. what I mean? No, but they yeah. are all still, like I work with people, you know, every week where it's like, I, I want something different than all yeah. the rest of these. I don't want it to sound like this. Whether it's the way, where they sing, whether it's the way they, um, they approach the melody. Right. They mm -hmm. want it to be different than, than everything else. There are yeah. still those artists. And I, I feel, feel like those artists are the ones who, um, who have chances to be legacy, legacy artists. Yeah, right. Or, you know. If we go back to I Am Music, right? <laughs> now, I think I've, I've probably addressed this before, but my experience with Michael knowing how to get there, not even just Michael with Dre, so certain, you know, and you will be able to correlate this, is when T-Pain is saying, like, everything sounds the same, right? Our biggest artists today are, I would say, our most influential are people that are, the one thing they all have in common is they're free, like freedom. Like when you are your ultimate self, yeah. you know, when Michael knows he's an alien, so he's going to give you his most transparent yeah, self, yeah. when you listen to Billie Eilish now, yeah. right? It's like, the reason why she's refreshing is like, this is her imagination, her feelings, very transparent. Amy, right, yeah. she really, they really wanted her to go to rehab. And she was like, I ain't going. So she was her most transparent yeah. self, you know, and we can go on, but I think the more artists today accept themselves mm -hmm. unapologetically, you know, and they're, they take that step to, to be loved or crucified. Mm -hmm. I think that's where you get absolutely that new unapologetic yeah. like sound. And like, you have to take chances to be great. Absolutely. Right. Like you, yeah. you can't, there, it's one of the things that I always say to everybody who walks in my studio to sing is I've heard every mistake on earth. From, every, yeah. from from singers that you would consider your your heroes, so you have to understand that you can't you can't be afraid of making mistakes because the only way you find those great great parts is to push and do mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that you've never done before. So when somebody's singing, yeah. like you have to you have to go for it. Oh, you course. have to take chances and yeah. and not be afraid that you're going to crack up there because yeah. because you've you've heard yourself crack up there yeah. before go ahead and crack your ear and your ear is crazy too i remember we, we had a session with um an artist that i was working with <laughs> and 
and she was singing and I mean, her voice was beautiful and airy and I mean, everyone loved it. And she was in the studio and you were like, hold on, hold on. Do you have allergies? She was like, no. And you were like, I hear something in your voice. It just sounds, sounds, I hear something in your voice. And she was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And it was this back and forth. And you were like, I'm going to send you to, to Dr. Mysterio. <laughs> wow. And, and he like, they did an allergy test and she's allergic to every fucking thing. And he heard it. I was like, Miska, she sounds amazing. She sounds amazing. Like, Miska was like, no, I hear something. In her. Something's awesome. I don't, I don't, I hear it. And he, she went to get an allergy test. And she was she like, to everything. I felt so bad for that. Nuts, <laughs> egg, everything. everything. All of her favorite foods. Sushi, everything. 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 But it's crazy because she was so used to eating that way. She didn't have any, I mean, she was normal, but like he heard it in her voice. If he didn't hear that, she probably never would have got out of the test ever. Hey, man, Michigan's a master. I know. I'll, just... I'll say it. Like he's past Yoda, you know, all of these space references. But, you know, um, <laughs> Star Wars, I mean, you know yeah. it's like, Man, a lot of people say gifted, but I would go as far as saying, man, like you're literally anointed to do what you do on the level to be able to like understand it, to understand vocalists and know how to bring the best out of them. That's that's past being gifted. That's your that's something else. You know, you did it for me. You know, man, you literally took the impossible. (laughs) It wasn't impossible. It was so amazing, such an amazing ride. Oh my gosh. He's so incredible. Like he is like he's he's so humble about it. Oh yeah. But he is so incredible as a vocalist. Like when I tell you, if he goes ahead and lets you hear it, you're gonna lose your mind. Wow. Because he's just so good. We we've never talked about that journey openly. That's kind of been. Uh, but I thought it was a joke. Literally. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It was bizarre. They gave me a $3 million deal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, overall, yeah. And it was like, and they wanted me to be an artist. I was like, y'all joking, right? This is, <laughs> you know, they were like, no. We like, we want you to go in the backyard, you know, and just do something that you love. Yeah. And uh, and wow. I never forget, Mishka, we was at Glenwood, and you was like, I'm here for you throughout this whole journey. And literally, I was so, I've never said this a lot, but I remember being so insecure of course, about my I voice. Imagine. And I couldn't see how anybody would even remote. I was so used to being yeah. behind the scenes, like right. the producer. Yeah. And, and Mishka, man, he was like, like a general and he knew exactly what to do to put around me. And, yeah, that was, that was crazy. And I remember getting behind a booth. And I remember I, I started, uh, dang, I can't believe I'm saying this. Only for you, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was trying to, I was singing this song. And, and I remember I started, I, I kind of broke down a little bit. It was quick. Yeah. You know, quick. <laughs> uh, and it was in that moment, I was like, oh. So this is what an artist feels like mm-hmm. behind the roof. Oh, wow. So when producers are trying to get them to sing songs they don't connect to or connect to. Right. So it changed my perspective as, yeah. as a producer. Like, I was like, I will vow to make sure anything that I produce for an artist, they will always be able to mm. connect. That's the tool in the belt. That's amazing, actually. The, the thing that I think even you probably realized is that it's for a singer when they walk in that booth and get in front of that mic it is the most vulnerable thing they'll do in their whole life it's it's just at least in the beginning yeah it's just one of those things where it, where it can go south real fast yeah. if they're if, if you aren't if you if you can't encourage somebody enough to let them know that it's that they're safe yeah Cause it's, you know, it, like I said, it's just, it's, it's scary. Yeah. I started out as a singer. So I've been in front of producers and vocal producers who, who for some reason, you know, just never got, yeah. got me. So I, I understood what it's, what it's like. And so for me, I always figured it was, it was important to find a way to make every artist comfortable. I mean, and I, I remember so being important. my first gig with Rodney 
first gig was the Spice Girls, right? We did the whole group. Um, at that time, Sean Daniels, who to me, um, rest in peace, yeah. Sean, best vocal producer on earth, um, he had done pretty much the whole whole record. And he he hadn't done Victoria. Right. And he he looked at me and he was like, Okay, you do you do Victoria. So I sat in the in the booth with her and I practiced with her. We just practiced. Just sang it over and over and over again. I sang sang it with her and got her to sing it a bunch of times. Yeah. And Sean walked in and he peeked his head and he was like, Man, you ain't recording it yet. <laughs> right? But in my mind, I knew what she needed. Right. right. I knew that's what she needed. Yeah. Um, she just she just needed to feel comfortable right. with me. She didn't know me. So we just sang together, laughed together, did it, did it a bunch of times. Right. She went in that booth, she did that thing in three takes. Wow. But you yeah. knew that that's, that's what she needed as an artist. I knew that's what she needed. He's a general. When, yeah. he was, when he was recording my vocals, he he knew that I, I easily could get distracted. Yeah. So he wouldn't let me go to the bathroom. <laughs> I couldn't talk in. It was just like I couldn't take a breath. He was like, That's good. Uh, but like he's a, I would say he's a true master. Yeah. At being able to capture. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, you guys know me. I love both of y'all forever. You guys are both in my eyes legends, and I've done so many amazing things and amazing projects, and I'm just stuck to, you know. Let the world hear and just get yeah. to know you guys more. Um, you know, uh, I know we still have time, but um, we'll put the link to um, these guys underneath in the in the bio of the podcast. But yeah, we'll continue. Sorry, just wanted to take that little. Well, <laughs> like, and one of the things that we I wanted to bring up is like uh, we mentioned this a little bit before we started rolling, but like for everyone out there that's watching, we always try to provide a little bit of insight of someone that to get into a studio and they're probably scared shitless because like you said, it's the most vulnerable place to be. What is one thing that you can say truly that would rub you the wrong way or turn you off? Because again, they, they don't want to do that, but maybe certain young artists and young singers or older singers would come in and do the wrong thing. What do you feel each individual? As an artist or as a singer? As, uh, as a singer. And keep it real. Yeah. Like, what would they do? With, like, <laughs> like, keep it real. Um, to me, I, the only thing a singer can do that will rub me the wrong way yeah. is say, I can't do that. Mm. Like, don't like don't ever say that. Always always say, you'll try. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Because the, the one thing, the one thing I do know, I know, vo I know voices, I know ranges. I can hear, if I hear somebody sing for, you know, a bar, I pretty much know where they can go on the top. I yeah. pretty much know yeah. pretty close how they can go on the bottom. And to me, yeah. if I tell you to sing something at 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 that is at the top of your range, but you've never sang that before, don't say. Well, there's a reason for you asking. I can't do for it. it. Yeah, you know, and I I'll tell them originally, but it, to me, if somebody says it over and over again, it'll irk me because I know that they're not pushing themselves to the limit that they really really could reach. Totally, because you know it's like. We all are afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. All of us are. But the only way we ever get better is to just go for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. When, I, when I lived in Toronto, this is the craziest thing. Um, there's a singer up there who singers down here probably would never ever have heard of. One of the best, talk about doing runs, never heard anybody do like runs like him. The only one, who, the only one I've ever heard do runs close to him was Glenn Lewis. Wow. Both of them were in the same city. Right. And I had to sing backgrounds with this guy. His name is Carlos Morgan. I had to sing backgrounds with Carlos. This is back in the day. So we, we were on a 414. Him on one side, me on the other side. Mm -hmm. And some of the stuff was, what it wasn't crazy runs, mm -hmm. but it was, it, was, it was good enough that I had to keep up. Right. So instead of going, I can't do this, yeah. I just watched him. I studied how he moved when he sang that line, studied how his head moved, studied how, and I realized, oh, he's tricking it. He's tricking that run with his neck. Mm. He's he's hitting it every single time. Hey. And so after a while, I, I just did it with him. 
And if his head was moving, my head was moving. Yeah. And we then literally we built the built his whole whole background thing of it was just me and him. But we did and that's probably like thirty two tracks of us on the same mic. So that's huge. It sounds yeah, huge, of course. Right. right? But if I walked in with that failure mentality, yeah, and not not thought, oh well, you know, no, yeah. I'm, I don't sing runs. But if I actually study and watch, maybe I'll pick something up. And I ended up picking up something that, to me, to this day, when somebody can't do a run, I tell them, move, move your neck. Yeah. <laughs> move your neck yeah. then. You know? So. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take that note for when I start, you know, because I'd be singing too. I mean, I don't know I about, still got you. Know, I still got to record you. I, no, nobody knows, but you know, <laughs> I'm still going to record you. I'm definitely doing no it. It's way. on the list. No way. I can't sing. I, my voice is horrible. So what's your note? Um, man, you know my stuff is always evolving, Michigan. Uh, <laughs> I had one big moment to where uh, I went to the studio, Universal Studios, uh, one of their room studios. I mm-hmm. This is when they were in Santa Monica. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not the new building, but. And um, this artist that was at the time signed the Republic, um, I won't call no name. But when I tell you, first of all, I waited, you know. So when he finally got to the studio, he or she, I'm not giving no clue. <laughs> uh, you know, all of the things, right? Uh, he, yeah, I mean, he literally came in and was on his phone. Right, and I'm my gear is set up. I'm you ready to go. Yeah, he came on his phone talking, right? And he'd be like, and he walked out of the room, right? Okay, bro, I promise you, like 45 minutes went by. Came back in the room, still on his phone. When he came back in the room, he was like, Man, I want to play these beats from some other producers and start playing. And when I tell you, it was probably the most. Rude, like yeah, it was just like, and I remember, and then he walked out and he left. And this was a new artist, right? Wow. No, and I remember, I talked to uh, my family, and and I was like, it's those moments. You're like, why do I do this? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like why, you know, why did you come wanting to give your best, and then. It was my father-in-law who gave me some wise words who that changed my perspective. Mm. He was like, son, it's your duty to always, don't ever let somebody else's light, Lord, like dictate how your life should be. He was like, when you show up, you always show up, whether they want to give their best or not, you always show up willing mm-hmm. to always give your best. And yep. it's not up to them. I just learned in that moment, you just never let another light dictate. Right. So yeah. it's almost that moment you learn how to protect your energy and your light. Yeah. And, and I've never had another session like that, but it was in that moment to where I realized, man, it's a privilege to go to work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, and things that people can do to kind of, I don't know if you feel like this, but it's like, I feel like, being a producer is almost like you feel like you're always rescuing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're, uh, it's like people are trying to get things out and they may not know how to yeah. explain it. I, or, I deal with that a lot too. Yeah. You yeah. know, so what a person can do at this point, I don't know. Yeah. It's like it's, I guess I have a softie for wanting to make things work. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, if it's complicated, I know the payoff is going to be bigger if I'm right. patient enough. Right. You know, to yeah. be able to figure it out yeah. and just, you know, I think it don't matter how difficult people can be. I think at the end of the day, yeah, everybody wants to be understood. Uh, exactly. You so know? you're a pretty patient person. 
Yeah, but that day I wasn't. Yeah. yeah. One day, <laughs> it was like, it was just, that was an eye-opener yeah. for me. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. I think that the, I want to talk about the fun one. That's, Def, you're a very good person. Yeah. You, you wouldn't. Because I, I would I would have just told him, you know, either we're here, we're here to work or we're not. We're not. Um, but late, that's one of my, that's, yeah. that, that would be a pet peeve of mine. Now, this is L.A., so. Traffic is awful, so I do expect that we have to have some leeway. But, but I, I remember, I remember back in the day when when I when we first moved here, and Donna used to go have meetings with this one A and R guy. Mm-hmm. He's a legend in rock, legend, legend, legend. And she was warned by the office: um, if you are if you are more than five minutes if you are more than five minutes late, he will leave the restaurant. Just to let you know, just want to let you know. It's just the way it is. If you're more than five minutes late, he's not going to be there. To me, I really feel like for, if you're a new artist, you need to be early. Like if you're not, if you like, like I would go back to like when I was a kid and somebody would tell me if, if you're not five minutes early, you're You're fucking late. late." Yeah. You know what I mean? So for, for a new artist, (laughs) you really want to be like, I wouldn't show up a half hour early because that's not, that's, that's also not good etiquette, but really. Try and try and make yourself early. You know, like there are he's he's worked with people who who are, you know, are pretty strict on time. I, I like I won't mention what the producer is. Yeah. I won't mention who the who the person is. But I worked with a, an amazing artist who was um, pretty big, and he went to work with said artist and pressed the buzzer at the at the studio, um, and the engineer got on. He was like. Um, weren't you supposed to be here 15 minutes ago? And he said, uh, yeah, uh, I'm so sorry. Got late, you know, traffic. He's like, well, um, the producer you're here to work with doesn't like people to be late. So he said, based on your relationship with somebody else, he's going to give you one more shot the day after tomorrow. Tomorrow, And if you are not on time, if, you, if right. you are one second late, he won't be working with you ever. So there is a, there is a like, you know, we, a lot of us in this business, we get used to people being late, Yeah. but you know, there are some people who are quite powerful. Ain't doing that. No, yeah. you know, ain't doing that. Yeah. I mean, they look at it like, especially to really get in the game, you know, like to really be like rise above the noise. And you know, there are certain people that are geeky. I don't want to say geeky, but they're yeah, of course they can really press that button and they're giving you a shot. Mm-hmm. To them, it's like I know there's like uh, hundreds of million, hundreds of millions of people that would just love yeah. to sit. Yeah, it's like and if that's something that if you don't want it as bad as I do, right. then this is not gonna. It's for them. They look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, as yeah, a work telling. ethic. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you don't want it as bad as I do, then I don't think this is gonna yeah. be. I mean, that's my thing as a manager too. Is it, you know, I mean, I, I juggle so many different things, but on the management side, it's like, you know, I, I can't want it more than you do. You're the artist. If if I'm, if, you know, like I'm here to support, you know, what you need to facilitate the things that you need, but I can't want it more than you do. If you don't, if you don't want it, I can't. I can't help you. Mm-hmm. Can't um, hold your hands. Yeah, I either. can't. I can't do that. You know, like we've all seen those artists who, and I'm not talking about Michael. Like if you even just go to go to go to Amarion, like you know, those kinds of artists who work their tails off for every single thing they get and right. just work and work and work. I yeah. mean, I remember days when we were do when when the poor kid had just got off off tour, and they got him in in you know cutting, and he's literally has pretty much no voice. I literally had to take him. Record companies sometimes don't get certain things. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like for him at that time, he was he was just working too hard. So I called, you know, I was blessed enough to have a good relationship with the executive there. Yeah. And I asked him, I was like, can you give him four days off? Like, can you just it's like, I know, we, I know we're on deadline, but we're never gonna make the deadline the yeah. way he sounds like right now. Cause you know, he literally got off tour yesterday and his voice sounds like he's tired. I was yeah. like, can we give him four days off? And he, he was like, if you say we got to, we got to. So I, he gave him four days off. And then I took him to Seth Riggs myself. Right. I paid for the lesson. Right. Because I felt like, let me get, at least get him a first lesson so he can see what's, what's possible. Right. 
And he was such a good student of just yeah. work. Like yeah. he knew that if he if he put in the time, yeah. he was going to get the results he wanted. And we ended up. I remember during that whole process, we ended up cutting pretty much all the pandemonium in just the fastest freaking turnaround for yeah. a freaking record. It was back to like old old Michael days, thriller days. <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, it was fast. Like yeah. we he was. They were back on. They were back on tour inside of. You know, like six weeks. Yeah. You know, so, but it's it it takes you wanting it enough, and it takes you wanting to actually put in the work. You're never gonna be who you want to be if you don't right. if you don't have the if you don't put in the time to actually oh, yeah. do the work. Yeah. You know, like I I there's so many people I work with who are who think they're working hard. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Oh they, yeah. They think they're working hard, but you know, when you when you're actually get an opportunity to work with someone like Rodney or someone like Dr. Trey, you you kind of realize what what actual hard that work what, is. That's what it looks like. You know, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it looks like. Rodney, Rodney, if any Rodney taught me anything, this is what Brian looks like. Mm. You know what I mean? Like so when I was with him, I think we did when we were in I think in New York, if he got there, if I knew he was getting there at one o'clock, I'd be there at eleven o'clock. If he left at two o'clock in the morning, I'd leave at five. It was just what I knew was necessary. Right. I was new. Yeah. I was not a millionaire. So it was so my- he's putting in that time. If, he's, if he can put that in time, then I gotta go harder. Yeah. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So that's that's the kind of mentality that you have to be thinking about in terms of a work ethic in this business. If you if you really want to be successful and you want to you want to put in the time, but you also want to take the time to do the things you actually need to do to get to the right. point where you can put in that time. Right. You know what I mean? If you put the sugar in that, right? And you notice, like, when I look back at my career, yeah. to the outside where it looks like grind work, but when you in it, for me, it was just fun it was yeah. blast and curiosity of course. of course i was there at the wee hours of the night because i wanted, wanted to be. it yeah. wasn't like mm-hmm. i gotta work for this yeah it was like no like i'm so yeah. curious i wanna be and that was for me that was yeah fun yeah well, it's funny i like i remember when i was interning at def jam everyone was like you know, you, you were working so hard and, and, and that's probably it, obviously why you ended up staying there for so long and ended up with a job, whatever. But for me, I just, I, I was just passionate and I and I loved being, you know, part of this company that was doing so many cool things. And I loved all the artists. And it was like, I was this excited, inquisitive, you know, like just curious, you know, just, yeah. I, I didn't know what, you know, what I wanted, but I was winging it and I just, you know, figured it out as I went along. But that's what it, you know, everyone everyone has to do that and figure and figure and it out. And you were never you were never ashamed of asking a question of something you didn't know, right? I mean, to a certain extent. To a certain extent, because I mean, I, I felt like the culture um, at at Def Jam was like it was very. I mean, it was all everyone loved each other, but it was very. It was very like what? It was it was always very aggressive. What? It was you like, don't know that. It was like chaotic. At the time. Uh, Kevin Lyles, who I, I love Kevin, it's great. I mean, it was Leor Kevin, Julie Greenwald, who now runs Atlantic, mm. was over there. I mean, everyone that, that was there was that was amazing. And that, I mean, I felt like that was my schooling into the into the industry. Mm-hmm. I was there for, you know, nine years. But, you know, no, I mean, everyone was always very helpful, but it, sometimes it would be very like, like, you don't fucking know that shit, motherfucker. Like, but get, to the me, out, get the fuck out of my office. For you and Def Jam, that might not have been the best thing. But for me, I've still, to this day, if I walk into a studio and I see some young engineer do yeah. something I've never seen before, yeah. and I've been on Pro Tools since 2002, <laughs> yeah, yeah. if if I see some engineer do something I, I've never seen before, yeah. I'm like, what was that? Yeah. Show me that again. Yeah. What's the key, man? Show yeah. me again. Yeah. Show me again. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. the, when I first started. One of the reasons why I was at the studio yeah. so long is because when Rodney saying. would leave, I would go in to where Jean Marie was yeah. or where Dexter Simmons uh, was, and I would just listen and be like. Oh, what was that? Like, yeah. how did how did you make that sound? And they yeah. were like, "Oh, well, what yeah. I did is I did this." And, you know, yeah. like, and those things are yeah. things that you take with you. Yeah. But if you don't ask, you're right. Yeah. And, and it, honestly, to be honest, it might, it might have been a lot more of my insecurities than it was. 
What were you afraid of? Or is like I mean, that would happen if you ask those questions. I mean, this is this, this is going to turn into a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> this is about to turn to. I mean, but no, I'm just saying. Like, I mean, I you know, I've lived through just a lot. Of, I mean, obviously, no one likes to be vulnerable. No one likes to put themselves in vulnerable positions. Um, you know, I've had insecurities about all kinds of random stuff, whatever. But like, I just think that coming into this business, I didn't know anything. I knew that I loved music. My 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 intro to the music industry was yeah, it was Def Jam. So I mean, and, and to come into a, such a great company, um, but like I said, it was it was it was very chaotic. Um, but everything got done. Every, it was very, it was like organized chaos. But and mm-hmm. everyone loved each other. But it was like a it was like a tough love, mm. tough love thing, you know? Tough love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, from everybody, even, even with the artists. But like, and I've always had great relationships with all the artists, which has been great. But like, at the same time, I, I mean, I was I was 19 when I started there. So I was still <laughs> figuring out my life, my my own my own issues, you know what I'm saying? So I, in, in the midst of me working for this company that was a lifestyle, because I mean, I was there so many crazy hours. I mean, I, that was my whole life, you know? Um, I didn't really have a life outside of that, but I don't think anybody really did at that point. It was like you, 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 you know, because Russell was always very big on, on it being a lifestyle, not a job, you know. So True. that was how he kept everyone kind of like focused on 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 getting results because it's like that was your that was your whole your whole life, you know. And I loved it. I I, I don't. That's what what kind of created my work ethic that I have now, you know. So I, I don't I don't regret any of that stuff. I love it. and I still love all those guys. I talk to those guys. Um, you know, still, but. So, you know. what would you think would happen if you? <laughs> I'm trying to. You see, I'm trying to back out of the. He's trying. Mm-hmm. He's trying to keep out of. No, I, but you see, no, how you nobody. Feel, yeah. It's no. Um, like I said, in that in that environment, it was very. Um, uh, you know, you would get put on front street if if you like. There's times I'd be in meetings, you know, and there'd be a conference room with 35 people, and it'd be like, "You did what?" <laughs> or like, or, or like, you know, how could you fuck this up? Because there was a lot of that kind of like, that kind of energy. You know what I'm saying? Shoot out public. Yeah, I mean, people would get cursed the fuck out in me- in these meetings all the time. You know, like, like, yes, yeah, so today we're gonna go over this, and what do we have over here? Oh, we're gonna do this. No, that's the dumbest shit I ever fucking heard. Get the fuck out of here. And it's like, I'm sitting there like, yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, the, even if it wasn't even me, I'm like, I felt bad for other people. I'm just sitting like, oh fuck, and it's my turn. I'm like, I'm not saying shit. <laughs> What the fuck am I, yeah. you know? So I, it's just, it's that. Nobody wants to be, you know, yeah. embarrassed or like, you know, it's just, I mean, that's all. It's just my, it's my own, it's my own insecurity. Sorry, no, I feel like that's not a common thing of right. someone else's experience. But, 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 but literally, that right there, that real feeling of rejection, not feeling good enough. Yeah. You know, I know I'm smart, but it's like, what am I sizing myself up to? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I don't want to put myself out there. Yeah. Literally, going back to the whole T-Pain reference, like, why does all the music sound yeah. the same? Yeah, yeah. It's because nobody wants to take, I don't want to say nobody, yeah. but it's that willingness to be crucified of course, of and course. loved yeah. at the same time. But it's time. funny because, I mean, this, you know, I was at Def Jam when I started when I was 19. I'm, you know, I'm old now. And, and the crazy part about it is I'm still dealing with like, I mean, at the end of the day, you're always learning about yourself throughout your whole life. You know, you think you you think you know everything. Every day you're learning something. You're yeah. like, oh, I didn't realize. And things change too. Like you evolve and you grow and you learn. So I'm at a point now where I, you know, I feel good and I feel like I've evolved over the last 25, 30 years, which is great. But like, I'm, I'm still changing and, and adapting and, and learning who I am and how to express myself properly and how to be more, you know, this or that. So. And it's, I had a conversation with my sister this morning about it, and, you know, and it's like, this pandemic's been good for me because it's really gotten me to a point of like getting comfortable being alone mm. um, because it's it's allowed me to, to have so many more creative ideas about just music and, and business and, and ventures. And that's why there's so many other things that are going on um, idea-wise because my, my brain's, you know, I'm not, I'm not occupied with like, doing this or doing that or going here with friends or whatever. It's like, I, yeah, I spent, I try to have a, a balance of like, you know, work and, and personal life, obviously, but, um, you know, spending the last year kind of alone, you know, you're forced to be creative and, and think about 
things that need to be fixed or 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 things that are missing in the business that would help and 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 like you know philanthropy and all these different things that I, I I'm I'm getting more involved with, but it's I feel like it's making me a better person and it's it's taking me a long time to to get to that. I think like, I feel like I'm just getting I'm just scratching the surface now as an old man, you know. <laughs> but the thing is that's but I'm, but I'm happy. Just, I'm happy. Life, man. It, it is yeah. a that's, that's, life. Awesome. that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah but my, that's my, awesome. point, my point is that like. Like that's it. It's all part of life, and at that point in my life, I you know I was still learning and growing. I'm still learning and growing now, you know. But I, I embrace it, and I love. I love to love. I love people, and I love you know. It's it's all part of, of 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 you know my journey. I think for for anyone who's of a certain age who's trying to get into this business, right. for me, you have to let yourself ask those questions. Like if you don't, if like say, you know, I, I had back in the day when we were doing Shorty 101, mm -hmm. um, Dave was mixing. Now everybody knows who Dave Pensado is now, but right. back in those days, nobody knew who Dave <laughs> Pensado was in the general, yeah. you know, in the general public yeah. world. But even back in those days, like I straight up would ask him stuff that I knew was stuff I should know by now, right, right, right. but he would just, he would never ever punk me. Yeah. But he would show me. Yeah. Yeah. He would show me. And the thing is, I think if you're nice enough and if you ask in, in the right way, oh, of course. most people yeah. will will be generous enough to show you no, something that course. you didn't know. And I feel yeah. like any kid, don't be afraid of it because it's like and, and I, when I say kid, I mean like, you know, grown people. Like yeah. don't be afraid to ask something because yeah. every once in a while you get to get somebody to be like, listen, I got no time for you. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, but yeah. you know what? Most of the people who are really actually successful in yeah. this business are really nice people. Yeah. Well, you know? also they've been like yourself that have been given that before. So you don't want to be that for somebody that that's not what you learned. Mm -hmm. You learn that you got a few, you know, people willing to spend their time and help you out. So you are going to be more apt to help the next person. Yeah. Right? I also know people who, who are lucky enough to have people who would do this for them and will never do it for anybody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. But still yeah. take the chance, ask. Because you're gonna the, the little nuggets you're gonna get are gonna could make a whole new career Super for you. Value. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's so worth the the risk of mm -hmm. uh, asking something that you feel maybe stupid. I was just have it was funny. I was on Instagram live the other day, randomly, right? Um, oh, even before that, I was doing this thing with Berkeley, and he had some students from uh, Venezuela and some just different stuff yeah. around the world. And they wanted to see my session. They wanted to see like your process, you know, my process. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it. You know, there was a moderator, and I was like, you know what? They can go on YouTube and watch that from anybody. Like that's that's not gonna get you into the game. That's yeah. not gonna talent to get you in, but it's gonna be your heart that keep you right, right in the game. Um, It's like the anatomy of what makes us tick, what yeah. makes a song a song. You know, food can look good, but not taste good. Right. Mm. You know, and I think, and I love what you were saying, is like, I think when you accept your truth or your freedom in you and you do music, I think that is what flavors your sound. Yeah. That flavors your music when you can say, I'm scared. Yeah. I need help. Yeah. And you write that. Are you, and you say that from a place that was, it took a lot for me to tell you. Yeah. I know the world thinks I'm Superman, but I feel super vulnerable today. But that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, I, I think that like people, uh, the consumers now can see when something is being force fed to them. They're, they're yes. becoming very smart about that. Yes. Um, and, and people can tell when, you know, when the artist is, is not authentic or is, it seems like they're just, it's, it's not, it's not real or something's not connecting and they, they can sense all that stuff, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, and you know, it's funny. There's a, there's a post that I saw Willow Smith posted. This is uh, when they first started doing our table talk, but she was, she did this post about like, you know, saying like, I love men and women equally. And, and if I could be a, like a vehicle of love, like what's wrong with that? 
what, who, what, why does it matter where that love is directed? And then she was saying that, um, you know, um, the more that she's becoming more open about her struggles and her and her vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. the the more people really start to see um, and understand her. But also, there's so many people that that um, are dealing with the same thing. In so, terms of maybe just like, everything, yeah. just I mean, just life and and and. My point is that, like you know, when you're when you're vulnerable, as crazy as it might be for me to talk about whatever vulnerabilities I have, and there's a lot of them. Um, like people identify with that, and that's what makes you even more relatable and more like, oh, I. And it's you know, I was telling this earlier the other day, but there's some initiatives that I that I want to get involved in, um, on, on different levels. Like I said, like the philanthropy stuff, but like there's um. You know, there's there's different stories of like even my weight loss, like that stuff is like inspiring for other people and and my journey that on that side and so many other things, but like that's stuff that I that I could talk about and be vulnerable about what my struggles were and, and how I felt and like all the things that, that made me feel shitty or whatever. But like people that are going through that now, you know what I went through. It, that's for them because yeah. I mean even when I hear stories of people that have, are, are have been through stuff that I'm going through, I'm like. Oh, I fucking went to the same thing, right. and it just makes it makes me kind of go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not a fucking. I'm not alone. Of course. Mm -hmm. So it's like I, I want to be more um, vocal about that and be more real, and that's why I think this podcast is great too, because I, I feel like it's a great, um, you know, chill kind of conversation about life and music and yeah. you know, all these different things. But like, we, you know, we can talk about being vulnerable. I mean, you talked about your story, you know, when you were recording. That's that's fucking amazing. You know? Yeah. So it's um. When you do stuff like that, you know, I say a good friend to give you permission to be your best self. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love you. You know, I love you more, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's real. Like, you know, it's okay. It's, 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 it's what I say. Imperfection is perfection. Yes. Yeah. You know, you ready? Yeah. Play on words. When you're in perfection, it's perfection. Yeah. But I think everyone's struggling for perfection, and that's the that's the problem. Yeah, you know, no, if you're trying to <laughs> be out of perfection, meaning like you you are like you 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 are a moving ball of light of energy. You can never perfect that. It's yeah. something that's constantly yeah. You, to master so to ma to master not saying master far as in a skill, but I think when once you master something, I I think boredom is very close. Mm -hmm. to that yeah. but the fact that we've been given the gift of life and sound and environment we can never perfect yeah. energy and yeah. if that's accepted meaning like you're going to constantly yeah. be evolving yeah. and, um, and to accept your flow to accept where you at and, uh, and be okay with not knowing all the answers of course and write about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, put a melody to it. Right, right. You know? And be confident. Yeah, accept your rhythm. Right. You know, right. Set, you know. Accept and your rhythm. And try to be better about, about that. that. Yeah, I think for songwriters and producers, I'm telling you, having the skill set is just, that's the earth suit. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, we can, but I think it's the real us, which is our spirit. Yeah. yeah. And I think whatever we read or whoever our friends are, influences our soul which is our yeah. mind and our intellect agreed you know which our, they, those two things kind of work together yeah. so it's like and if your skill set is music or you know being a major you know a manager yeah. you know is you know we can really go off on the deep end we can really <laughs> go drop some pearls yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. but it, it all works together it's and I'm telling you, like any producer or yeah. songwriter or artist, if you just say yes to yourself, yeah. even if it makes your mom, dad, or your cousin, or your best friends not happy with you, yeah. if you can be okay with just loving you, yeah. Yeah. you know, even yeah. you're, and everybody ain't gonna, yeah. you know, it's like, that's when you find your center. Yeah. And then from right. there, it's like, I know where they stand, I know where they stand, but I know I'm centered and I can make better decisions. Yeah. You know, when I'm centered, you know, and it's it's a it's like that affects your it affects yeah, no, everything. Right. That's a great that's a great closing uh 
sentiment. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it, it, it's real. And that's a great thing for people to hear, especially people that are aspiring to be producers or songwriters. It's like, don't be afraid to be, you know, perfection. It, it, there's a Rick Rubin quote that he said the other day that was like, perfection is, you know, the killer of creativity or something. And I was like, that's so awesome because it's fucking so, it's so true. Say that one more time. Um, perfection is like, is perfection is the killer of all creativity. Mm. Something, something like that, mm. something along the lines of that. But I'm like, mm. you know, you're striving for perfection. It's like you're, 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 you're killing the creative process, you know? This yeah. is not a science. This is an art form. Exactly. Mm. And I think if people understand that this is, this comes from, from people. Do you know what I mean? Like when you look at, look at, like w one thing I always want every young songwriter to know is none of us came from, you know, I've met his parents, the house he came from, man, you're blessed, mm. right? But a lot of us yeah. didn't come from those places. Yeah. Um, and f for all of us, we all have scars of our own. Of course. So for mm. songwriters, what I want every songwriter, young, old, everybody yeah. to understand is that those scars, those mm. are your superpowers. Yeah. And if you, if you embrace them instead of pushing them away, yeah. you'll be a better songwriter. Right. You know what I mean? Like I you're, that. you're not going to, you're, you're by pushing all that stuff away. You're not going to, you're never going to achieve what it is yeah. you really want to achieve. Yeah. You know, like the one, one of my favorite songs that I wrote with Elder Bars came from my knowledge of what his kids must have been feeling. Wow. Mm. Um, and, you know, so I, I he, he had played this haunting melody the night yeah. before. I came in the next day and I started writing the song. And this is at the beginning of his record, so yeah. like it wasn't even, this, the content of what I was writing about wasn't really something that I'm sure he wasn't even thinking of opening up about. Right. But I kind of felt like I was a fan of Eldebarge, so right. I kind of wanted to hear it anyway, but the song, did, the music dictated where it took me. Mm. And it took me to some place where things that had happened with me and my dad, yeah. things that had happened with my childhood. Yeah. And when he came in and heard the song, he started crying. Oh, wow. And he was like, how did you know me? I was like, because I know you. Yeah. You know, because I know you. So, yeah. like, don't be afraid of those scars. Yeah. Embrace those scars yeah. and use them in what you do. Yeah. That's why both you guys are so amazing. Yeah. You're amazing. Yeah, You're amazing, you too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys baby, so much for start time. Crying. I'm like, whoo. I cry, man. It's okay. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I think, you know, again, thank you guys for this. It's yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Um, you know that's that's a wrap on this one, I guess. But uh, Oof. there'll be that information was... in the in the uh, summary in the bio um, about the uh, podcast and book as you and these amazing two uh, guests. So, so um, yeah, thanks, guys. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. And if you want to see more episodes, click here. Somewhere here. <laughs>